en route. Situation, a summer fisherman had packed away his gear toward home going, but rocked in the quiet inlet water, hearing it, hearing the breezes sift across Georgian Bay's massive shore of rock, hearing the lightsome heartbeat of peace. The breeze was stiffening. He hauled aboard the rope anchor, clumsily pulled away the cliff of shore, readied both oars, and set out. In the broad bay, the only rocks to steer clear of were near that one large island. The dip and slap had become bumps out there on open water. Then what? Then what? The future lay ahead of him as of us. Rising winds can be threatening here too for any who left it too late to remember to head homewards. People are potential crises scattered everywhere. On islands, isolated, bobbing about in small craft far too far from rescue, safely at home, waiting. All travelers sometimes feeling they wait too long for home going. Poetry is. Poetry is always in unfamiliar territory. At a ball game, when the hit most batters and the crowd is half standing, already hoarse, then poetry's eye is astray to a quiet area to find out who picks up the bat the runner flung out of his runway. Little stuff like that poetry tucks away in the little basket of other scraps. There's the cradling undergrowth in the scrub beside a wild raspberry bush where a bear lay feet up feeding, but still three rubied berries glow in the green. He had had enough. Then there's the way a child's watering can forgotten in the garden. No faucet, but the far sky has filled. When sun shines again, it has become a dragonfly's pretend skating rink. Scraps. Who carries the basket? What will the scraps be used for? Poetry does not care what things are for, but is willing to listen to any, if not everyone's, questions. It can happen that poetry, basket and all, is the unfamiliar territory that poetry is in.